Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm off my game, apparently. I haven't done that in a good while. So, thanks for being here for a special week, week, evening, week, afternoon. When does afternoon end? When does week, evening begin? I want to thank Nick and Jeff for becoming members off stream. And I want to say hi to Mitchell, Shane, Christian, Jokernut, Andrew, Chris, and that. <laughs> it is a weird time. It is a weird time. So five o'clock my time. I don't know what. After beer 30. <laughs> hey, Tony. Hey, Betamax. Good. Hey, PF Dennis. So we are going to do an unboxing and check out this Otour Laser Master 3 today. We'll talk a little bit about it and why I have it and that. So try to get Charlie's pets in. Hey, Kelvin, make sure we get plenty of hair all over the desk. Hey, Maple Leaf Makers. <sighs> this is interesting timing. I've been obsessing over the idea of building an MPC and C lately. This is a similar project. Well, MPC and C is a true DIY um, project and I have one and it's it needs to be fixed but before it needed to be fixed it was working pretty well so hey Nuno so most of you know that I received a Offero laser master 2 I think it is from Daniel at Modbot so Daniel and I talked at Murph and I talked about wanting to tip dip my toes in and play around with a laser. And he said, hey, I have this diode laser if you want to get an intro to it and um, and learn about it and that kind of thing. So he sent it to me and we did uh, cover it, covered that on a members only stream in, in July. And that's live. That's public for everybody. So that got, gave me a taste and I want to go. I wanted to go to the next level. I wanted a little more capabilities because that Offero laser was basic. Um, no auto homing, no air assist, five watts. So this has auto homing, has air assist, and is 10 watts. So um, who else? Daniel, Phil, Zexeltor. Welcome. Hey, Ronald. <laughs> kind of smell bad. We will not have Charlie anywhere near when we are working on this. So, so. Daniel and I were talking a little bit and I, I, I get the op offers, right? I get review offers in my email and many of them are for lasers. Many of them are for Ender 3 clones. And I decided to go ahead and respond to one uh, with the idea that I would do a let's let's get it open. Let's go a little more because there's a hundred of these reviews out there. Let's try to go a little more into how it's assembled and um, how the motion system works, stuff like that. It's not complicated. Um, and then just kind of get it together and overview its capabilities. But the review part isn't going to be really review. It'll be more like I'm going to use this in my projects and you'll see what I do with it over time. So who else do we have here? Hey, Ray. Hey, Red5. So fixing your MPC and C is content. Yeah, it's, I wish it was content. That has to happen in the other garage and I'm not set up to film over there. Maybe one day I will be. I do plan on reorganizing the other garage. So we are going to talk about this laser, its capabilities, the, as we talked about in the July, um, in the July stream, we're gonna go over some of the safety issues because this is, so um, Makers Muse did a video on these. These are a tool that needs to be respected and needs to, uh, you need to pay attention to the safety considerations, just like any other tool in your in your shop. I have table saws, I have band saws. Um, they all have their own set of safety um, job hazards 
that you need to uh, account for. So we will go over some of that as well. Um, Ronald, Lightburn. Yes, we will be using Lightburn today. Um, after getting that July stream, we, we used the trial version of Lightburn um, during that stream. That's what I've used to power, to, to run the, um, the other laser I have ever since. I bought a license of it. Um, so we will be using uh, Lightburn today. So, hey, Squirrel Brain. Hey, Edge of 3D. Welcome. I have a fire extinguisher now. I didn't have one of these last time. I have one that will be in the area. I have proper, better than what they come with. I had these last time. Um, eye protection. So we'll be using those. And then I have a enclosure that I used before and we assembled on stream last time. I'm concerned this might be too small. So I may have to do something different for this. Um, they sent me the Laser Master 3, the Air Assist Pump, and an engraving platform. So we'll go through all of those. Oh, and I have, yes. On the last, in the last stream I did, I had used this um, ducted fan for ventilation. So this tool will not live in this shop. I don't have adequate ventilation in here for real work um, where I'm cutting acrylics or anything like that. It goes in the other shop where I can open the big garage door and run a fan and all of that. So here we will be running this through the enclosure and out my door that's right on the other side of my camera here that's wide open. Um, so that'll be that. Charlie will not be in here. I will, I will kick Charlie out um, when the laser's running. But for now, he's gonna sit here and just kind of sit in the way of my mouse. <laughs> so. Kelvin, honeycomb platform. I don't think their platform is honeycomb. We'll check it out when, when, it, when it's there. Oh, hi Charlie. I guess you're just gonna get comfortable. <laughs> hey, pushing plastic. Hey, option 350. Okay, so let me set these aside. We don't need the glasses for a good while. So let me keep them, trying to keep them scratch free. They came in this real nice um, case. It is the free mascot brand off of Amazon. So let's go through and see what we have in here. Now I have opened this box um, I did tape it back up, but I opened it to see um, what sample materials it was going to come with to see what I had to prep um, before here. So that's all I did is open it to look at the instructions and see what came with it. So let's see if we are going to get a better view with the overhead. Hey, Grant. Okay, so the manual, oh, an actual assembly manual. So some of the videos I saw, because there's a bunch of them, um, said it did not come with an actual assembly manual, but they were from like July, so it looks like they've included it now. Then we have some front, it looks like, with its little emergency stop switch. The control board is in here. An SD card. A little slicker looking than the Laser Master 2 I have. The other one was just 2020 extrusions. That looks like probably the rear. Your hardware and tools. Hey, BBs. Hey, Nathan. I'm going to 
it looks like probably the side pieces. See what we have here for there. The included glasses are not green like the normal ones, but they look about be about the same quality and style. I wonder if these fit over my. Oh, these actually fit over my my regular glasses pretty well. <laughs> Hey, Lewis. Nope. He's back in the little, little thing here. <laughs> Charlie is just going to chill. That's fine. What do we have here? We have belts and a Wi Fi antenna. And then power supply, power supply cord, and a USB cord. Hey, Troy. Looks like air assist tube. And that is quite the sample pack. I'm, that's not, it's not quite. I've seen some that have bigger things, right? Oh, well, that'll be enough. Some control cables. Air fittings. And the laser module itself. Hey, Killer Prince. Okay, so this is a 10 watt laser. So that's one of the things I wanted was a little more power than I had. But the other big thing was laser or air assist. And this has, this is nice. It has air assist inside the module. So you don't have an extra thing coming down the side and bulking up the tool head. Anyway. And then the X gantry. Looks like it's pre-belted. Has a NEMA 17 on one side. V-slot wheels. So the larger ones like an Ender 3 on the Y-axis and the smaller ones like, I don't know, doesn't open build call these the mini ones on the X. So something I noticed on the other, the Alfaro laser I have, is all of the belts on that are not parallel to each other. So where these attach here on the other laser, they come in at an angle. This is all night looks to be nice and parallel, which is good. How is tension applied? So there's a there's a pulley on. Oops, can I get in there? There's a pulley down in there and it looks like it looks smaller than a um, 16 tooth pulley. And then there's an idler on this side, but I don't necessarily see any tensioning mechanism. So. And it looks like some spots here for belt on the end. That's on both sides. So, okay, is that everything out of here? No, we got the other Y axis down buried over here. And that I think is everything. Yep. So. Let's put all this stuff back in here so I don't have to. Oh. Okay, where did my mouse go? Okay, so that goes there. 
This is probably going to go something like that. So it's going to go back here, avoiding Charlie's tail. It's going to go over here and sit on Charlie's tail, and he don't care. <laughs> Really, Charlie? There. <laughs> okay, so where are we starting? Okay, that's not gonna be as easy to read. Let's go here. We have some websites. So there is the Laser Master 3 site. Man, what? Oh, where'd my... Let's go here and here. There we are. <laughs> Laser Master 3 site, 24 volt. Just don't know laser tail off. <laughs> I think he would notice that. 24 volt, four amp power. 400 by 400 in grave area. They say 20,000 millimeters per minute in grave speed. All the little specs here, but there is a man, an installation manual that I downloaded. So we'll go over here. Installation manual. This will be easier to see anyway. Charlie is totally chill. Let's see if we can do something like. <laughs> That's a little too far away. Oops. There we go. <laughs> oh, let's go through the manual. English starts off at the beginning. Cat hair smells horrible when it burns. Our cat's tail once had an encounter with a candle. Ew. All the bits and pieces. Assembly video. We won't need that. Here we are. So you need the following parts, the rear assembly and the left and right Y-axis. Yeah, maybe this will be better. No, that's not going to work. Never mind. <laughs> this is just going to get in the way. Oops. Here we go. Uh... Oh, so we have a cord that goes through. So is that this cord? And this cord that goes through whatever the left. How do I know which is which on here? Does it have the flame sensor? Curious how they detect. I have no idea. We will check. Trying to figure out how to tell between which is the left and right of these. I think that's, that's that. So I think this goes right here and then this comes down through here. So there's a, there's a channel in the extrusion that this appears to go down. Put this to the side. And it goes like that. And it sticks out the front.
Yeah, it's hard to tell if it's the where the tensioner goes. Where does the tensioner go? Are the steppers in the rear? Yeah, the steppers are in the rear. So the tensioner would probably go to the front, which is, I'm sure this is a little tensioner. So I think I have this backwards. Yeah, I think I have it backwards. We are constructing a death ray. Absolutely. We are constructing a death ray with the connector getting caught on something. Okay. That. So that goes through there, thread the Y axis inside the side and then an M4 by eight screw going in there to hold it together. I'm sure that's in here and I my shoe has come untied, so give me a minute. There we go, okay. Let's move this over to here, get it out of the way. We're going to need a couple of these. And let's just use the tools it came with. At least for now. Less effective than the Mythbusters death ray? I hope so. Oh, there goes Charlie. Okay. <laughs> this is true. Charlie is much better than Mr. Bigglesworth, though. Why is that not going in there? My work area here is just a little constrained for this. And I am going to immediately give up on their tools and go to mine. Are you going to catch? That was a little weird. I thought it was the laser beams to the sharks. Or sea basses. Okay, well, that's one of them. Dr. Evil had Bigglesworth, Dr. Claw had Mad Cat. And I have Charlie. <laughs> oh, where'd my mouse go? Anything. Thread inside that. And I guess we just do both of those. Okay. So we just do both. This is not complicated. I'm just. Move this over here. And I am definitely shy on space here. Charlie, you're in the wrong spot for the Charlie cam. All right, let's see if I can edge him, edge him over. There you go. There, get Charlie butt. <laughs> see if he settles in. <laughs> Uh, 
What are you going to do, Charlie? There you go. Okay. Gargamel. Yeah, what was Gargamel's cat name? That's way too long ago for me. Okay, then we get the front together. And we don't actually run any belts or anything yet, huh? Okay. We'll put the x-axis on there. With that in the front. And... The y-axis goes out from here. Azrael. That's right. There we go. Towards the front. Smurfs. Yes, it is a blast from the past. How loud does this laser not have a safety enclosure? Most of these diode lasers do not have a safety enclosure by default. They, you need one. You need to use one. I have one. It is, um, and Otour has come out with one. I don't know if it's actually available yet. Um, that looks actually pretty nice, just looking at it. Hey, Derek. I think you need to pay special attention to enclosing these. So, like I said, it, it probably would be nice if they came with that. But they don't. Charlie would take care of any Smurfs wandering into your place. Charlie has, um, Charlie is a mouser. He has um, a mouse under his belt. I think he just played with it until it decided that it, until it was too worn out. But Charlie is a mouser. So I think he would do, get the Smurfs. I don't detect any binding. Lines up pretty good. Oh, I do not know if I'm going to have really enough room to do this properly on this, on this bench, though. So we'll see how that goes. Make sure I don't have any, putting any scratches on it. Need to clean browser cache. Yeah. Um, need the following parts ready. Synchronized belt. I need belts. And these are closed loop belts, it looks like. Yep. Oops. They are closed loop belts, two of them. And we need some M4 set screws, which are in the box here, and the idler assemblies. Oop. Okay, both pieces. Oh, what do we have from there? Idler assembly after sliding in secure with an Allen key. Let's move these off to the side and 
think we are going to turn this over. It's kind of weird. Might want to go here. This goes on there. This tightens into here. I know you do Trident serials. Do you do? Well, it's not in terms of which specific um, model. It's just processing serials. They all go into the same queue, Phil. And I am one person who um, can assist with Trident serials or serials in general. Um, Yes, 2.4 Trident V0 Legacy Switchwire. I think this little washer needs to go here and then sandwich in this thing, but maybe not. Nope, it goes on the other side. Okay. It goes on the other side, and then the head of this bolt goes in there. I think that just goes like that, and then just gets not tight. What can I answer for you there, Phil? Okay. So those go there. After sliding, secure with an idler, with the Allen key. And then run the belt in. <laughs> inside and loop it around the loop it around the stepper pulley saw you requested cereal for your salad fork today on i did i posted that last night so i i, I have a cereal um for salad fork it's um trident cereal 784 i think and um and yuri is maintaining the number of solid forks out there and it's it's the 10th one so it's zero zero nine i wanted to get a single digit um solid fork serial number on it so i did okay so i think we can just try to loop this thing around in here i guess that wasn't too bad and then it goes around the pulley on the front. And then does it just get tightened like that? Um, oh, we had an old fashioned antenna on top of the garage. Can only receive the Smurfs on Sundays. And other than that, we had to wait for VHS. I had three channels, I think, when I was growing up. So I had to wait for um, Saturday morning before I got any cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons was the thing. And only Saturday morning. Do you reject many cereals? There are a lot of cereals that I make to, are, that I don't issue until something is done. Usually it's tool head wiring. Um, tool head wiring and um, other basic requirements usually tool head wiring <laughs> push in plastic you didn't get one for your solid fork it is very possible that it was not noticed okay and then the other belt here comes around And I can kind of pull this to where it just doesn't fall off. Hey, Ken. Are they still sending out the serial number plates? So that's not a Voron thing. That's someone that made a bot on Reddit to send those out. Um, I believe they are still being sent out, though. The link should be in the response on your Reddit post. Yep.
Same here, lived out in the boonies, yep. I just have the trident. So if you message Yuri, I'm sure he'll he'll let you know what cereal. Maybe I have cereal 10 then. I don't know. I'll have to bring it up with him. He commented on the cereal request. Oh, so you may actually have one. You just don't know it. I don't know. Um, I put the belts on and then there is a M4 set screw that goes in there for tension. Here's the best position for tension. Okay, we're gonna tension it. And after the belt is tightened, tightened use an Allen key to lock the idler puller assembly, pulley assembly on both sides. So these little Allen keys, they're itty bitty, but they've got a machined end and then the Allen key end. What size are these? Not that size, they're two millimeter. So this must go in right here. I have no idea how tight this should be. I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. Feels a lot tighter than the X belt, but I don't think the X can be adjusted. Maybe this can be just a little bit less. Let's go right there and try to get them the same on both sides. Yeah, he might have assigned it and not let you know. I don't know where he's keeping that record. I think it's just kind of a his own little thing. Okay, so let's loosen this, tighten this. Tighten this and then see if they feel the same. Needs a little bit more. Those feel pretty good. So try to get a little bit of, there's a stepper pulley, a stepper tucked up in there. The belt's wrapped around that pulley. And then on this side, there's just this slot. Not a lot of stress on these, so I think that's a good enough. Does it have end stop sensors in it? This uses sensorless homing, so it uses TMC drivers. We'll see how repeatable that is. That's a question I have is how repeatable is that going to be? Hey, Tezza. Russell, sorry if it's been asked, what price point was this laser cutter? Um, it has not been asked. And from what I've seen, it's in the six to $700 range for just the, just the laser cutter. I don't believe that comes with the air pump. This is about 80 to $100 for the air pump, I think. Do I need to plug that cable into the front? I don't know if it's told me to do that yet. After the timing belt is tightened, use that to tighten that. And then we're supposed to push the x-axis assembly to the rear limit point on both sides and then tuck the, tuck the belt in, looks like. So we, we, that's how we're gonna and I think I'm going to do it this way. And then we're going to pull the pull the belt over and tuck it in. Just making sure that we're in on both sides. And it is aligned, I guess. Hmm. 
Yep. This definitely looks nicer than the 2020 extrusions of the last one, for sure. And it's very low profile, which might come into problems with the material, because this stepper is in kind of an odd spot. I know they probably did this just to keep the center of gravity as low as possible for those speeds they're advertising. Okay, now I need the Wi-Fi antenna and a couple of other screws. To lock things. Oh, this is for, so these are the bump stops for the sensorless homing, I believe. So they go here. These two guys and, oh, that's a... Probably this one. And which one are they having me put this in? There's two here. I don't know which one to put it in. There's... There's two holes where they say... Does it give us uh, any other indication? No, no other indication. So let's try putting it in the furthest one over. Let's try putting it in the one closest to the front. And then I will check that by moving the tool head all the way here and see if the, if the laser module still fits. That goes there and the laser module still fits. So I think that's where it goes. Hey, Ed TR. Snow goes down. Yeah. Exactly, Calvin. That's what I just did. Thumb screw. Is the thumb screw already on the laser module? No, it's in this other bag. Let's see here. Where's the end? Where's the end? There it is. There we go. <laughs> hey, Nerf, you welcome. This guy threads into the side here. And that is what. Is what holds this on, right? There we go. Okay, do you know if it's 10 watt input power or optical power? It's it's 10 watts output. There it's something 40 watts or something, I think is what I've seen. Um but the, the actual laser output is 10 watts on here. Or it's five watts on the laser I had, uh, the other laser I have. Thumb screw on there. And then we connect the wires here. Oh, and we have a Wi Fi antenna somewhere. Where's the Wi Fi antenna? There it is. Hey, Maker Source. Now we got. Wi-Fi goes on the on the side here. Hey, 
Hey, DJ Maddie. What time is it where you're at? Hey, Manuel. These are the little, I think this is just a regulator for the air assist and then some pneumatic fittings. So I'll just set those to the side for now. What did I miss? We're just doing assembly. There's not much to the assembly, but. But it seems to move smooth, so we're good. Hey, Collie. 2.46 a.m. Well, thank you for being here. One forty-five in the UK. Okay, Y-axis motor cable. And, oh, we have wiring, okay. So let's move that there. And let's turn this over on its back again. We've got this guy goes in right here. I think that's plugged in all the way. And then we have a bundle of wires to go through. <sighs> Is Air Assist G-Code software controlled on this by chance? I d no, I don't believe so. By the way, no music today. You see, I am off my game. I didn't. I started without sound, so you missed that. That's that's the big thing you missed. Is no no sound, but now we are um, missing the music. It should be there now. Most of us are probably watching in bed. <laughs> I'm working a late shift tomorrow and from home, so lucky me. Awesome. So we got this big old bundle of wires. I don't know if that goes into the tool head. And then we've got, oh, this is the one that goes into the tool head. So. Is it really 45 minutes in already? Wow, we got a couple of those. So let's see what we do with them. So this big bundle plugs into the to the front here, right next to the Y axis. And then where does it run? Runs along the side and connects where the Z stepper is, huh? Just started a print and was watching the first layer. Got really consistent on my V2 after the GE5C mod. Awesome. I have the GE5C on one of my V2s, but only one of them. Okay, so this should plug in right here. And then it just kind of lays across, right? Isn't that how most of these work? Ah. So let's just go like right that. This is the new V02 laser edition. <laughs> Nero stream 10 minutes before pressing the live button. Ooh. So we have a stepper there and then we have L, Z, and C. We got a laser wire, which is this one. So L, it's labeled L. And then this comes over here and plugs in. Okay, there we go. Plugs in like that. And then I think we get 
tie it around like that. There is not much cable management, that's for sure. Z and C, do those go anywhere? Cable ties go there, cable ties go there. Okay, well, it has a few cable ties. That looks like an expensive machine. It is relatively expensive. It's um, US, it's between six and $700 just for the laser. Okay, we are gonna go here. Probably about that much. I'm not gonna tighten these down all the way yet. No cereal for a tour. No. <laughs> Seven to eight hundred euros. Okay. That has to go there, and then this is gonna go around here. I am really concerned that I'm not gonna have nearly enough um, room in my enclosure for this. So I have a. So we'll see what what we can do for, maybe I'll just have to not take the glasses off at all for any little test engrave. We'll see. I might be able to prop something up and make it work. Oh, are we getting any better? Okay, well, neither is great, but. Does it fit in my, yeah, that's the problem. I don't think it, it doesn't come with an enclosure, but they do, they, they just announced an enclosure um, that I will probably end up buying because it looks pretty nice actually. I think now that I've done this, I'm probably going to end up redoing some of those zip ties for the air assist. But let's see if this gets to the back without. Yep. And that just kind of goes along there. <sighs> there has to be a better cable management system that is going to wind up cutting its cables if it crosses. I think this typically hangs off on the side. You need a large enough enclosure so that these things don't get pushed into the um, into the cutting area. And I missed a spot on this cable, this zip tie. So pull that and do a new one. There we go. Looks fixed focus. It is. And it has a little lever here, a little lever here that comes down and then you loosen this screw and lower it until the, the lever touches and then tighten it up. And then you put the lever out of the way and now you're at your focus length. Okay. We are there. So let's see what else we have here. Drag chains would actually be nice in the price range of these machines. Yeah, a drag chain would, would not be hard to do either. It probably wouldn't be hard to um, modify into this. Okay, zip ties there, zip ties there. It's all bundled out of the way. It seems reasonable for what it is. Yep, pretty much exactly what I just did. And then we have ports. 
We have a little micro SD card slot. What is eight and nine? Upgrade button and reset button. And then we have input and output ports, harness interface. So we, we use these two plugs here, 11 and 12. 10 is open by default and that's just an IO port. It's a six pin it looks like. Adjustments of rollers and timing belts. Oh, there is a tension on the on the X. The factory has been adjusted the best position. If you need to adjust, please follow the steps below. Remove the screws and remove the cover. Loosen the screw, adjust the tightness of the belt, and then re... Okay, so I want to tighten the X belt just a little bit. So what side is that on? That's on opposite of the... Maybe this view. So this guy comes off. And they are Phillips. So it's like the X1 will reserve judgment. Yeah, we'll find out. Now, how does this adjust? Cover, and where's the other screw? There it is. So what this is. How does that actually adjust? This probably loosens and what screw tightens it. Not that one. That one? Yep, that one. Tighten it a little bit and then tighten that. And that's a little better. So it's loosen the bolt there, and then this one right here for tensioning. But I think I'm at the end of the travel on it, and I don't know if it's great or not. I don't know how tight it should be. So we'll just go for it. Okay, back together. Do we please need any adjustment while the cover's off? Now we already adjusted the Ys. Those were part of the installation process. This one is, it's probably tight enough. I think it's at the end of adjustment though. So we'll just call it good. A rent. Oh, so this is to adjust whether it is. Uh oh. Something is binding now. And I suspect it's this pulley that I just adjusted. Let me see if see if that's it. I think it's the pulley I just adjusted. So now it's not moving smooth. Let's 
do some of that. Just a little bit. I'm gonna loosen that one just a little bit and tighten it back down. Yeah, now it's not doing that. Now, while we have it up here, this seems fine. The tension on the X axis seems fine. Um, on the Y, I think it could be tightened though. So let's go here. And since we have the cover off, it has these bolts here. And this one is completely loose. The rear one is tighter. So these are eccentric bolts, I think. It's like an Ender 3. Just tiny, tiny little adjustments. And then I'm going to tighten this. There we go. And make sure all of them are tight. Nope, let's just... Those, there's a little bit of friction when you turn them by hand, but they're not spinning freely. So that's, I think, where I want to go with those. But that side's done. We'll do this side the same way. This one seems a little tight, actually. There we go. And then we will tighten these up from here. There. And there. down here. There we go. Ah, oh, laser finger is kind of a scary term. Yes. Move smooth. What else do I have? Oh, and then we can power it up, huh? Okay, let's see what we're going to be able to do with the enclosure. Let's see what if we're going to be able to do anything with the enclosure. So I have this platform here because my my desk is not deep enough, but we can edge out a little bit more by doing that. And then I have this enclosure that I had bought for the last one that fits. So let's see if this will over it at all well it doesn't go over the back but this is going to serve if things can move this will probably serve well enough to protect me from any reflections at least for the purposes of the stream I 
I think that will be not ideal, but adequate. As long as I can plug the USB into the side. <laughs> that is not the right fit, unfortunately. But we'll do what we can to make it work. <laughs> so we will keep that there. Now we need to plug it in. Let's plug it in and go from there. So it comes with one of the things I did see in the other reviews is it's got a weird, they took a weird approach with the USB cable. I'm hoping I can reach. They did USB A on both ends, which is kind of dumb. Why not do like every other device, USB device out there and go USB, what is it, B for the, for the device side? Oh, where can I plug this in? Okay, A there. We're gonna have to come down the side here and then up into my laptop. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to lose the Charlie cam because that's where this plugs in. I don't think that, oh, that might reach. That might reach. Let's find out. Does this still work? Um, we lost the, hold on, Charlie cam, Charlie sleeping cam. <laughs> Cause I unplugged it. Let's see if I can stretch this just enough to get to my USB hub. there. <sighs> we have power. Did white balance just go yellow? Maybe from this? It might be my my thing. Five days of troubleshooting what I thought was an electrical issue on my 2.4 to find it was the stepper tension screw on the stealth burner had slopped. Oops. Okay, little, oops, this one. What is this? 24 volt, four amp power supply. So that guy there, and then we're going to keep this off so it can't turn on, hopefully, putting some trust in the switch, plug that in there. Now... Does the proper enclosures have an emergency stop on the outside? Difficult to get to. I don't know. That's a good question. I have no idea. I have no idea. We're going to leave this off. We're going to do this. The other thing I kind of want to do before I get the enclosure done is check out this platform because the platform is going to be a better surface than this quartz countertop. So let's let's break that out. Let's break that out. Kind of interrupt what we were doing. Try to figure out where I put my knife. Where did I put my knife? Oh, there it is. Hmm. 
let's see. The platform is in pieces. It has, oops, let's go here. A little instruction manual. We have five bottom plates, some edge banding. And we slide these in, bottom plates slide in. So let's see how that works. Edge banding. Some foam tape, it looks like. Pieces. And the plates. We won't let him live anything down. What? What did I do wrong? Over to her. This is the edge banding. This is a piece of noodly foam. This is the plate. Little protective edges on it. What in the world? I haven't had those in forever. Had those in forever. Is that gone? Did I get rid of them? I think that's it. There we go. I feel special now. The lasers bring the bots to the yard. That has been a good while since I've had a good bot, though. Bots are here for the after hours stream. Okay, and then we should probably have some sort of hardware, hardware bag in here, right? Oh, there it is. I think that's it. So, this thing probably does something like this, and then it gets screwed in on the side. 314 for sanity. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm actually going off of a paper manual here. So this is just a bunch of screws, some edge banding, and then a little fence that's on there. Okay, that seems easy enough. Something black, oh, that was the, um, there's little corner protectors for the, for these plates. I, I did notice one of them just, it just came off in the box and I didn't bother fish, fishing it out. But thanks. Thanks, Ken. Okay, bunch of screws. And what are these? Oh, Phillips. Hey, I get to use my... Is there anything special about this? No. These are keyed. So I want to go this one. My Sunday's streams start at 7 p.m. for you. How do I want to do this? Feel a little constrained on my space here. I don't want to rest it against stuff and scratch things up, though, either. 
There, these are, um, I don't know if I can get this to focus, but if you notice, they are stepped. So they kind of lock against each other, which is kind of nice. Half the time she's on a train, she's in here. Yep. I tried. I was I was trying to watch um, Modbot's giveaway stream today on mobile, and I I just couldn't do it. But I was also on a walk. I was on my lunchtime walk at work, but still, it was not not working out for me. I can't, the, it wouldn't have been too bad, but I was frustrated that I couldn't adequately or properly ping or tag people. Okay, now let's move all these out of the way. Let's set this down. Get the rest of them in. Hey, Dominic. Welcome. Yeah, they really should fix that tagging on mobile. And is it case sensitive as well? That's good. I tried to tag uh, Modbot Army when I first came on, because I came on within minutes of it starting, but um, wasn't, it didn't come up. Yep, I got that tag. I got that tag. Yep. What's your day job? My day job is I um, I manage an IT service and support group for um, state government. Okay, that is the platform. Seems pretty sturdy. And then it's got other pieces here that are for the... Um, other pieces that are for a fence. Maybe it goes this way. But these pieces here can come along. And then there's a piece here so you can so you can line, I'm sure this goes like here, so you can do a fence to hold things in place. And honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna end up using this much. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, Modbot, welcome. Let's see how this, these aren't threading in and am I just not hitting the right spot? Platform is aluminum, yes. Now this was not included. Um, this doesn't come with it when you buy the, I don't believe it comes with it when you buy the, the laser. This was, a, this was an extra piece they sent. These are not threaded very well. 
I have to say. I'm trying to catch the threads on here. There we go. And then this. Well, that's interesting. That goes in there. I'm guessing that just goes like that and just kind of catches the side. That explains your scheduled union walks. Um, since I'm a manager, the union is of no, no concern to me. I'm actually not allowed to have an opinion or, or at least express my opinion on the union. <laughs> okay. There we go. So this can loosen up and you can move this around. And I think this is upside down, but that's the way I could get it to thread in. And then you can put a piece in here, set it, and then always locate your piece to the same spot. Okay. Charlie wants out. Give me a second. Okay, so I'm actually going to take this fence piece off. I might end up using it, I don't know. But I don't want it on there right now, so we're just going to set it out of the way. I have a whole list of stuff that's wrong with YouTube live streaming that I'll pass on to YouTube reps if I meet them again next year. Yes. Okay. So I think I'm going to leave this here because this will be a, a non-reflective surface to cut on. I don't, I mean, I don't know how much this thing will reflect, but I also don't want to cut into, I don't know what the laser would do to the quartz. I bet you it would burn into the epoxy that's part of that. So. Okay, where are we? What do we want to do? We need to turn this thing on. Let's let's change the let's change the height of this and let's get if we're going to do anything I'm going to put a piece of cardboard on here I think. What where am I going to get some cardboard? Do I have any just small pieces of cardboard? I have a big piece of cardboard. I've got cardboard. There we go. Okay, so I got a piece of cardboard. Let's make it a little smaller. There we go. We've got a piece of cardboard, at least on there, that we can do something. And then we bring this on. Maybe we can see it better here. Turn a little lever down for focal length, and then loosen this and bring it down to touching, and then tighten it up and put that out of the way. <sighs> So we'll leave that right there. Never good to have live streams and normal videos both going to the same channel. Really? I'm not going to bother. If I do any single videos, they're going to go to my same channel. <laughs> I did edit a video. I edited that solid fork um, video, the the serial request. <clears throat> okay, so this is off. And we have to let's see what the instructions say. Do we do anything here? Important note. Before starting the machine for use, you must insert the TF card. Otherwise, the operation of the machine will have problems. It came with 
something else in here. Mad Chammy, member for four months. Thank you. Hello and good evening from the DFH crew. Hello, DFH crew. Okay, it came with a little reader and a TF card. So let's put it in there. Kind of a weird spot for a card, but it goes in the back and it goes in like this. Looks like it. It, it clicked. It, at least it's one of the um, push to eject, push to click to, to, to insert. And then a little reader. <sighs> okay. So the user manual has been saved in the TF card. Please read it carefully before you operate the laser engraver. Okay, well. Isn't that what we're reading? Is the user manual? We're using, we're reading the installation manual. I think that's the rest. Now we get into another language. So what, what language is this? Is this German? I think it said at the beginning. What was after English? English manual. And then what is that? German? Deutsch. Oh, excited to see the salad fork video. It's such a cool looking little printer. Yeah, and I there's a few little things I want to finish on it, and I that wasn't a hesitant yet. It is a very cool printer. Um, there's just a few things I need to finish on it so I can actually use it. Um, does it work with light burn? Yes, it does, and we'll be doing light burn here today. Maker source, you got the 56 serial serialized legacy. Congratulations. I'm done with the manual. So let's close this. And there was a user manual that I want to pull up. Where did that go? There we are. Give me a moment. Find the... User manual. English. Bring that up. Zoom. There we are. Welcome back, Derek. Port description, button description. Charlie is being so good. He sits in front of the camera. I don't have to move it around. Okay, so we have power and USB, and then we have the power button over here, the emergency stop switch, and the the keyed power switch. Then we have all that stuff. Let's go main power. Press and hold for five seconds, power on. Five seconds, or is that half a second? That's half a second. Press and hold to power off, key switch, right to unlock, left to lock. It's left right now, It's it seems locked, so I'm gonna unlock it. There we go. Unlocked. I'm not sure how to interpret Charlie's face now. Well, he, he you see his eyes are kind of slowly closing. Half a second. Emergency stop. Pressing it will stop. Rotate to rotate to start. Your streaming writers, I'm about to print my first print on my LDO Trident Cubed. Awesome. How was the build? Reset button users do not need to use or restore button and the reset button to enter the upgrade mode. You need to briefly press the reset button while pressing the power button for a long time. And then the Y, the, the rotating, 
So, um, I want to switch that to Y motor instead of YRR, which is the little extra axis for doing um, ups and stuff, which I would say I would not even consider using this device without an enclosure if you're doing one of those, because that gives the opportunity to reflect all over the place. We got a delay. Oh, now Charlie, now Charlie's deciding to go somewhere else. So we'll just turn that off. Are we back? Machine operating, press and hold the power button to turn it on. Before starting the machine, you need to check whether the emergency stop button is turned on. It cannot be turned on when pressed down. Hey, Gary. Okay, well, let's turn this thing on. Let's turn this thing on. So rotate that to, to allow it to turn on. Most of it was fine. I wish I did zip tie the wiring up to the hot end. Had to get more slack and add a chain link. Add a chain link, interesting. So just in case, let's get our beater glasses out and we're gonna turn it on now turn it on oh now it's homing cool it's homed it auto homed when i turned it on and the laser's off so <sighs> they go from special specificity of milliseconds to for a long time. <laughs> that is funny. Let's start up. Let's bring up. Um, it is on. It is not plugged in. So let me plug this in. I hope I can reach. I hope I can reach my my hub that's right here. It is a very very tight there we go so now it is plugged in and this is flashing green and it detected something and this is very my usb cable there is kind of a little little tight i have light burn open now, remember last stream, I had all kinds of screen scaling issues with Lightburn, but since then I have two 4K screens now, so it doesn't seem to be as big of an issue. Charlie's on the other side of the room sitting now. He heard me, so now he's being contrary. <sighs> okay. Can I, what do we do here? We just go to devices and find my laser. Freaking laser beams. Exactly. Be sure your device is connected via USB and click next. Let's see if it finds it. It did not find it. Go back. Let me let me just restart um, Lightburn. Let me just start it from scratch. Open. Okay, light burn is started up. Now, devices. And I, I don't know if this is the other one. I'm going to just um, remove this. And let's find my laser next. I'm still not finding it. Is it on? It is in this green, green mode. Oh, and flashing yellow sometimes, flashing orange. You may have to upgrade the firmware for Lightburn to see it. Let's 
Let's see if this finds it. It is not finding it. Let's see. This is COM7. Let's look at Device Manager. This is not a Mac. It is Windows. Ports and COM. We have a USB serial port 7. Does this go away if I unplug it? It sure does. Plug it back in. Where was the F5? It is USB. Well, right now I've got it hooked up with USB. And it is COM port 7. So if I go here and go devices and try to find my laser. Well, it does have this here. Is this the laser? No, this is the 390 by, oh, sorry. Where is there firmware on the SD card? I don't know. This is the this is the laser two. This is the 390 by 390, the previous laser I had hooked up. Okay, let's go back to the to this machine operating. It's on. Install laser gerbil or light burn. Engraving and cutting with laser gerbil. Where is light burn instructions? Is there light burn instructions? Get past all the laser gerbil stuff. Oh, engraving and cutting with light burn. This is the latest version of Lightburn. I just downloaded it and installed it um, right before the stream because I know there was a, a, a bug fix um, that had something to do with this. Create manually, it says. It says create manually. Pick your laser or controller. Click serial. What would you like to call it? 400 by 400 and front left. So let's create it manually. Sure. Device, create manually. Gerbil, serial or USB. And we're going to call this the um, OTOR LM3. Hey, Jeff. And we are 400 by 400. And we are doing front left and auto home your laser on startup, sure. Next, and finish. Now this guy should be able to say, I'm gonna make that the default. Say, okay. Whoa, it just, it just auto-homed. <laughs> it auto-homed, so it's communicating, right? So if I go over to move, will this move? Oh yeah. So light burn is communicating with it. Where do you set up the COM port? Um, I'll, I'll show you. So before, oh, um, I will show you once I get rid of me. So down here under devices, this was the COM ports and I only have COM7 as a choice. That's the one that we confirmed in Di device manager. So, and then here is where you choose the device. So that's the one I just manually set up. So it appears to be working. So now, how am I going to, I want a bigger piece of cardboard as thing. This is, this is too small of a target. 
I feel like this is too small of a target for first tests. And I thought I had some bigger pieces. But I have no idea where. I feel like it's too big, too big of a target, but why don't we do this? Why don't we go um, home it? And it's going to home it. And I'm just going to set it, I guess, down here in the in the home area. And then we'll just do a small, a small little cut for our first cut. I don't want to cut up the box that came in. I was okay cutting up the engraving platform box because it's nothing's ever going back into that, but. He said con seven before and device manager didn't have the line of sight to the selector and light burn. Yeah, my bad. Charlie out of the room first. He is sleeping right here, but yes, I won't, I won't turn it on until he's out. But I do want to see if I can get this enclosure somewhat over this. So let's see here. I need to go over that way. <laughs> it's just not big enough. Okay. With end stops, absolute coordinates will work, which is nice. Yeah. So I'm going to get Charlie out of here. I'm going to put the glasses on and we're going to do just a real, real, real small, um, quick engrave on here and see what happens. And it's cardboard. I've got a, I do have a fan running my little um, air circulation fan. If it gets bad, we'll stop it. Charlie, you got to go. Let's get it set up. I want to I want to disturb him as little as possible. So let's go here. And what can we bring in? So we're going to we're going to just put our piece down in the bottom corner and it should just just work. So I'm really I'm really sad that my enclosure isn't big enough, so I should have checked that beforehand. Um, let's open. And what do I have here in my downloads? I can I can I don't want a light burn file. Let's just do an image file. Do I have my um well let's just do Charlie. Let's do this guy. Let's make it way smaller and bring it down here in the corner. And what is this? That's, how big is the piece that we have here? Our piece is 60, 60 millimeters. So if I do a 40 or 50 millimeter piece starting right there, it should work. So if I do that, and that is um, layer zero, zero. And I get rid of YouTube chat so you can see the whole thing for a second here. We go over here to cuts and layers. We're gonna do an image. It's already set up as an image. And I wanna turn this power way down. What do you think, Daniel? What would you start with? With a 10 watt laser on cardboard, what would you start with? Without having, without having gone through a calibration cut, should we just try like 10% and see what happens? Or 15%? Oops. Now let's bring this up. Let's go there. Let's bring YouTube chat back. And look at this. What do you guys think? I want to. I want to go like ten percent. Let's go ten. For cardboard, old man. Maybe we go seven, like Ken says, and go fast. 
like 8,000. We're just YOLO. Yes, we are YOLOing. So, okay. And I think we can come up here and where is the preview? Is there, if we preview that, that's what it's gonna do. We're going seven at 8,000 and see what it looks like. Um, I think I can get this right here. Yeah, that'll work. And Charlie gets to go. Okay, Charlie, sorry. I'm gonna wake up Charlie. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don't let Charlie in, okay? Hey, Andre. <laughs> okay, glasses. And I think we can come over here, and if I just frame it, it shouldn't do laser, right? Frame. Well, that was annoying. It hit something. What did it hit? What do we got? No air assist for engrave? Oh, I haven't hooked up the air assist, yeah. You're gonna find yourself out in the cold kicking the boss out like that? I know. <laughs> it aired out. It, it failed when I just did the frame. Why did it do that? Is there a, here, let's look at the console. Console. We got, I have no idea. It says pound X to unlock. Does it need to be unlocked? Now let's go back to move and home. It's homing. And now if I frame, it didn't do the laser, so. Oh, okay, that time it worked. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna put, put Z glasses on and we are at 8,007 percent shock warning. What would have caused the shock warning and just that? Let's start it. Um, cut image. Why do I get, so Daniel, I get this error on the other one all the time. Cut, in, cut might be out of bounds due to overscan setting, continue anyway. Let's see this. Well, now it's airing. Now it's airing. Let's see. Let's see if there's a G code locked out during alarm or jog state. Okay. Pound X to unlock. Move. Let's home. It's homing. Let's move this over a little bit. Sure. Let's frame it. Okay. Let's try again. Glasses on. We'll see my mouse. Start. Oh, there we go. Clifford doesn't support lasers. Um, I'm not sure what the considerations with that are. 
Move image to 2-2 two, two to avoid hitting. We are getting something, but it's not a lot. It's interesting, it's, it's showing up as white, not dark. Is that just because of the low, low power? We need to go a little darker to actually get a burn. What line interval did you go with? Whatever the default is, it's probably 0.1. Isn't that the default? It's almost, almost done, I think. 60% done. I'm gonna run it again with a little more power. White and no smoke, so it's not really doing much. I can see a little shadow of what it's going to be. <laughs> it is at 90 percent so i'll just let it finish then we'll just run over it more power Okay. As the Donut Media peeps would say, Moa Pella. Okay, so we'll go over here and we're just gonna go to the cuts and lasers. And let's bring this up so you can actually see it without me turning off the, turning off the chat. And let's go to 15. And I mean, it's also speed. So I wonder if we should just try going 20. Now nah, let's go 15, see what happens. So, okay. Back to this, and I should just be able to run this again because it's homed, right? All right, we can home it. Okay, and then start. Now we've got some now we got some dark going on. What's the overscan setting? What am I supposed to do? What does that actually do, Daniel? Default is 2.5%. What was it set to? Let's see. Two point five percent. It's still pretty light. We could have gone more. There's that 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 balance between speed and power, right? You can affect a darker image, but in two ways: either increase power or decrease speed. I feel like this is a quieter machine than my other one. Try a Benchy. <laughs> Seems awfully far from the surface. That's where the little focus thing put it. I'll double check it when this, when this is done. Are you gonna dirty your lens without an air assist? Maybe.
Overscanning generates extra moves past the ends of each line, switching the laser off before it fully stops or even before it begins to decelerate, allowing the entirety of the engraving to happen. Okay. Okay. It is still pretty light. Kind of like pressure advance not having to turn on. It is still pretty, pretty light. Run over it again with a little higher power. See what happens. I'm just going to bump the power up. Okay, I just bumped the power up, and we're gonna go again. Ah, there we go. Oh, if it's close to the edge, that oh, I see. That makes sense. Oh yeah, this is this will be a good this will be a good burn. Laser beams. Hey, KB3D. Welcome. Yeah, this is going to look good. Sorry, I'm late. Why this laser over the X1? Um, because I didn't have an offer for an X1. <laughs> I, I mean, and I have no idea. Um, I, I honestly have no idea. Otour has a, has, um, seems to be doing a good job with these, what they are. So. Um, I also hear from, from someone that I, I, I trust that Otour is a good company to work with as far as it goes. This is going to look, this looks good. This is what I would expect. Is the build volume big enough for a 2.4 panels? Um, maybe a 250. It's 400 by 400. My bad. I have to run. Great stream. Very excited to see what you make with the 10 watt beam and air assist. Yes. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for being here. That I'm going to just pull it off because I'm not going to run that through again. That turned out pretty good. Yeah. Okay, let's put this back in here. This is almost like a modern top matrix printer. I, exactly. <laughs> okay. I want to, how long have we been going? Two hours. Uh, 
let's open up and at least plumb in the air assist and look at that. I don't know if I want to do any more cuts because I really am disappointed that my enclosure didn't fit and I really want to enclose it. Um, so we may look at the air assist and maybe do another quick engrave, maybe like someone said, my logo. Um, but let's, we'll be, we're close to wrapping up for a weekday stream. So let's go and look at the air assist. And this thing is really much quieter than the other one. Do you have some 2020 frames left over? I have more than a few 2020 frames. <laughs> User manual. Step one, open the package, take out the air pump. Okay. Then connect the gas tube to the gas nipple. Plug the 12 volt plug into the 12 volt socket. And fix the air pump. Okay. The air assist. Oh, this is tiny. Right, come on out. Good night, Ken. Time to fire up the table saw to make an enclosure. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure something out because I want to start using it. Okay, little power switch and um, volume. Power, kind of annoying that power is on the front with the power, or power inlet is on the front with the power switch. And it's just like, that's kind of a trend with these, these diode lasers, right? They put plugs in the stupidest spots. It's stuff for lasers I don't need. I think I just need power. Oops. Looks like they put screws in with the power bag. Something fell. That was a nice click. You're right. Okay, this I'm going to plug in right there. <laughs> I am not set up for this in this this spot. So here, let's see. Let's plug that in. I don't know if you can hear that. That's Max. And it's putting out some air. I had too much gel in my hair for it to move it and not enough hair. Let's see, does it get a little louder as I'm talking? I can put it over here. It's not really that bad. And it's not a, it's not a, a really obnoxious tone. So. Okay, so that would go there. And then you have some tubing. Now the the laser came with some tubing. Sounds like a beefy aquarium pump. Yeah, it's a it's a low pitched noise, so it's not bad. I don't need most of that. And I think this just goes And there like that. And that plugs in there. And then this could go around and kind of follow that and zip tie to the to the other wire. I'll just very loosely zip tie that. Off subject question, is there any major benefit of running TMC 2226s over 2209s? I don't know exactly what the difference is on those. 
There is no major benefit. To answer your question, there is not a major benefit. I don't know what the actual differences are, though. Okay, so that's there. That has its full travel. Okay. Uh, I have my logo somewhere. Let me see if I can find my logo. I know someone sent it to me. What do we have? Should be a diaphragm pump, okay. Give me a moment to find my logo. Maybe I can do a search here. Oops. Why is that not doing that? From. Share. Let's go. Has image. There it is. Save image. There. Okay. Got my logo. The 22.6 are just repackaged 22.09, so basically the IC is a different shape than the 22.09, but it's the same inside. Is it totally the same? Okay. Let's go here. I'm going to leave the Charlie there because it's kind of helping me position where I want to cut. Um, and I'm going to open the, let's go date modified, and we want image files and my logo. The project has been modified. Would you like to save before closing? Cancel. Can I import instead of open? Import image files, open, there we go. Woo, make this thing way smaller and move it over here next to Charlie. Let's go that big and I kind of have some idea of where it's at. I already printed my logo. It's right there on the cardboard. Yeah. Now I can tell this it's a different layer by going down here and clicking the next layer. So now that is the next layer. Charlie is, oops, that. So now over here, let me get rid of YouTube chat for a minute. I have two layers and I can actually turn off. I can just turn off the first, um, the first one, so it, it won't do anything. We can run the second one at that, let's go 6,020%. No, I wanna go 8,000, I want it to be quick. And 25% that we did before. 25. And the overscan, all oh, that's fine. Say, so, okay. Well, hi Steve, good meeting you at Earth. Is this laser similar to the one you were telling me you used for your logo on the V0 panel? Similar, but double the power. The one I did before was a 5% or a 5 watt laser, and this is 10 watt. Okay, so that one's turned off. This one's turned on. I should be able to home this. Go to move. We're going to home it. homing let's put our other camera here we're getting a good view yep oh and we're going to turn on our just low i hear for engraving you just need a little bit of air just low is fine and then we are going to frame it, see if we have some idea of where it's going to be going. Yep, that's right. So now, would it make a sharper image if it ran slower? 
Um, I don't know. I, I engraving you usually try to do super fast, so I'm not sure. I thought for engraving, you only need a tiny bit of air. Let's go ahead and start it. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Kind of skewed through the glasses, but. those LDO motors. I looked, they didn't have any kind of um, LDO like or similar um, markings. They were very basic, very basic markings from what I saw. So I doubt it. And I guess you're not really seeing the thing. I guess you can get a little bit of a glimpse of the logo being drawn. It's probably a bad thing that when my wife walked in and her reaction to the price was, wow, that's a lot cheaper than I expected, rather than, oh my God, you're not buying one of those. <laughs> You can see it. Well, now that the lines are in the way, it's harder to see, but it's almost done. It turned out really good, I think, for not tuning the settings. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> if I can get a... Yeah. That's all we're going to cut today. So... But I look forward to... So the plan is... The whole reason I got this is I was having fun with the five watt laser, no air assist, no auto homing. So the opportunity to have one with air assist, double the power and to be able to locate feature uh, home so you can actually do absolute coordinates um, was appealing for the projects I'm doing. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna put it in an enclosure and I'm gonna use it to cut out panels and engrave. And as I use it for printer projects, I'll just mention when I used it. So, so far what I've done with the five watt laser is engrave the, the pinout diagram in that ACM panel um, for solid fork. And then I've cut out um, acrylic panels for my V0, which I'll show. If you if you went to Earth, those were cut out with the uh, with the five watt laser. But um, there are links in the description. These are the first affiliate links I've put out there. Um, that's part of the the thing here there there are links to amazon which i do have an affiliate uh, partner or whatever you call it with amazon accounts so those are affiliate links um these are available just search for a tour laser master three without the affiliates um that's fine too um please treat this like you would a table saw or any other um 
tool in your shop that will permanently affect you. <laughs> um, I have. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown this, but I, I, I am missing a piece of my um, finger there, uh, table saw. So there is a definite respect for the tools. Do respect for the tools, respect for the individual pieces. So you have, when you're, when you're talking about something like this, you want eye protection, which is glasses and enclosure. You want lung protection, which is ventilation and, and um, ventilation and material. Make sure that you know what you're cutting, that it's not going to introduce something to the, um, it's not gonna introduce something to your, to your lungs. So material you're cutting and ventilation are, are critical. So, and then you are dealing with fire. So fire extinguisher um, and a plan. <laughs> Don't leave them unattended. So yeah, DJ and Addy, I cut three millimeter acrylic in six passes. Now it depends on the acrylic. You cannot cut clears. It has to be opaque. And the glossy um, black acrylic took like 12 passes to get through but the satin finish stuff that comes in the LDO kits only took six passes. So your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing, but the, um, the, um, the thing, it, it worked pretty well. This 10 watt will probably have more rectangular curve than your five watt to bear in mind. I noticed that on the, on the specs, it's like 0.1 by 0.6 or something for this one. Saw stop sponsorship. I would love to get a saw stop. I very, very seriously considered buying one multiple times and I still might. But they are. But that what's this worth? <laughs> yeah, good reminder to respect these tools on Ray Billings channel tombstone on battle bots. He had an accident. It's scary. Yeah, respect the tools. Don't take shortcuts. You are playing with literal fire when you do that. What was a five watt setting for acrylic off the top of your head? I, I could do it at 90% and 500 um, millimeters per minute. It was six passes. That was on the five watt. So it'll be interesting what this will do. I, I think I should be able to do it in one pass. So. Their patent runs out soon. Oh, for the saw stop? I have no idea. That would be cool as long as the quality's up there. I haven't heard anything bad about the cartridges in a, in a saw stop, so I'd wanna make sure that whatever else comes out is of the equal quality. Oh, Gov deals, California State Auctions get saw stops? Nice. Uh, the two or three millimeter acrylic, the LDO shifts with the V0. It was three millimeter and it actually ended up being, when I built my orange V or Trident, the LDO had sent me the, the panels for it to test size. So I tested size, but I didn't use them because um, printed solid sent me ACM panels and that's what I used. So I had these, um, the, the satin acrylic panels from the, um, from what LDO sent me. So I've been using that to cut V0 panels out of. <laughs> yeah, Chris, that's absolutely. Not sure I'd trust my fingers to cheap clones on that. Now, if reputable manufacturers are able to use license or use those technologies or whatever, then sure. But I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't buy a, a saw stop clone. <laughs> Um, what else? So this is going to be a week full of streams because I stream Sunday. I'm streaming today. Saturday's a members only stream. So, um, we will be continuing the 3d sets buggy build on Saturday. And I don't know if it's realistic to think we might finish it. Um, I still have to print the little, um, ball joints. So I think it, it probably determining on how much success I have with those <laughs> on whether we'll finish it or not, but I'll be spending some time on that in the next couple of days. Saw stop places get hot dog discounts too. <laughs> they use a hot dog to test it. If anybody else didn't know that. 
Soft stop patents begin to expire in August of 2021. Okay, with the filed extensions, this could extend until 2024 for the early patents, okay. So this thing is sleek looking. It is um, quiet. We will see how it works over time. And I will, um, like I said, I'll mention when I use it in a project and we'll go from there. So a friend of mine has a CO2 laser and he left it outside in the garage through the German winter with the cooling filled. Oh yeah, that's not good. I want to get a CO2. I'm going to get a CO2. I'm, I'm eyeing a 60 watt CO2, probably an Omtech. Um, I don't think I have the bandwidth or time to do something custom, but that'll be a little while. Instantly stopping a blade, turning 5,000 RPMs before it cuts through your fingers. No place to cut quality. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Kelvin, thanks for being here. Have a good night. Isn't a CO2 cutting clear acrylic? A CO2 can cut clear acrylic. Yes. And that's a big reason I want it. Because this, honestly, if the size is there, which I'm not sure it is, um, but this is doing just fine for three millimeter panels, or at least the other, the five watt was, I'm assuming this one will. So clear is what I'd really, really want. And then just the next level, CO2s are just nicer. And so, good night, Gary. Yeah, there's lots of things I could play with, with a, with a CO2 as well. The next level up from this, so. Light object in our town has a good K40 kit deal. I want bigger than a K40. I want, I want that, I want the Omtet 60 with the 20 by 28 inch um, area. It's about three grand though. So, see ya Troy. I have an 80 watt CO2 that has only been turned on once. I use my 10 watt diode all the time. I can imagine, I can see that. Oh, I wanna cut, I have, oh, I have some plywood. I should have brought that in. I bought some 12 inch pieces of plywood. I should have used that as my test pieces. Oh well. <sighs> um, yeah, I think with that, we're gonna, we're gonna call it a night. Two and a half hour weeknight stream, I think is pretty good. So thanks for being here. Like I said, I'll let you know when I use it. And hopefully we'll see many of you on Saturday. And then Sunday, I might start the Tridex. But by starting the Tridex, I mean um, disassembling the Trident. That's probably what it'll mostly be. Careful of the glue and plywood. These are those Amazon things. I won't cut them in here. I'll cut them in the other garage. But, so. Um, anyway, thanks again. Have a good evening, everyone. Have a good rest of your week, and we'll hopefully see you this weekend. So, oh, I am not even on the right screen to end the stream, so <laughs> bye. Mm -hmm.